Assalamu alaikum to the Muslims in the audience and to everybody else my general wishes greetings and well wishes to you listen Muslims black folk in general I'm recording this on May the 22nd um, for many of you right now uh, it's evening as I record this in local time but for many of you it's still in the morning, late morning, as many of you hear this, and for some of you it's even earlier, it's even in the early morning. For some of you, between the hours, depending on your time zone, between the hours of 7 and 10, I'm recording this, a.m. Many of you have had your Malcolm X Day celebrations and your festivals. You have ceased the activities that are going to commemorate the birth of Malcolm X and so I would like to take this time to point out some unpleasant but also some pleasant truths both to us and to others who are um, co-victims of the oppression of white supremacy first I'm going to address black folks in Africa and in the, uh, uh, in the diaspora but especially so in the diaspora Real quickly, I'm going to cut to the chase. Malcolm died as a Muslim, and I don't mean NOI Muslim. I don't mean a Moor or a Neo-Moor. He didn't die as a Hebrew Israelite. He didn't die as a Jewish Muslim or a Muslim Jew, as some people have been apt to mix together in some cities of the Northeast in the United States. He did not die a communist. He did not die a Christian. He did die as a revolutionary. Now how do you be Muslim and be a revolutionary if we automatically associate Islam with selling out to the white man because we associate it with Arabs? Well, this is where it gets tricky. Malcolm died as a revolutionary and a Muslim because Islam itself is the most revolutionary of revelations. It is the revelation of the ultimate revolution. It is where revelation and revolution against injustice meet together. That's Islam. Malcolm was following in the footsteps of prophets. Not just the prophet, alayhi salam, but uh, the prophets, peace be to them. What many of us don't understand is that just because the non-black Muslim world does not know that Islam has in its heritage a history of anti-white supremacy does not mean that it's not there. So what if uh, what we might refer to as the immigrant Muslims or the brown Muslims don't know this? Okay, they don't know it. That doesn't mean it's not there. Malcolm became a part of this within his first year of being a Muslim Muslim. That's what really makes him a hero. He began to understand what is inherently taught in Islam, but many people tend to forget, including many Muslims, that God, that Allah, the Lord of the worlds, whose throne encompasses, whose throne is larger and is over the heavens, as big as the universe is, is against oppression and injustice. And that while we can be oppressed by creation, he himself will not oppress even the wicked will have some reward given for their good deeds when they are finally brought to judgment before God. Before Allah, the Lord of the throne, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the Lord of the worlds, the Lord of the day of judgment, the just, the dominant, the compeller. Even the wicked will have this. If Hitler did an Adam's weight of good in his life, he's going to see it on that day. And... Any Sahaba, companions of any prophet, any saint who did an Adam's weight of evil in their life will see it unless they've been forgiven. And there is a high chance of that because one of God's names is the merciful. And another one is the loving and another one is the forgiving. The pardoner. Malcolm began to understand this when he went on that Hajj. So I just want to say to black folk right quick, listen, understand this. When Malcolm died, he was on 
of faith on a path that does not celebrate birthdays. He did not want his birthday celebrated. Grave worship is forbidden. If anybody goes to his grave and starts worshiping it in the future, know that this is not what he wanted. Idol worship is against what Malcolm died believing in. Don't make him an idol. He is a hero. The man was a martyr from all we can tell. I would not be surprised if on Judgment Day, prophets came to him and hugged him and said, you're a real man among men. You are a man of God. And if we could intercede on your behalf, we would gladly do so. I would not be surprised if the one who's allowed to intercede, interceded on his behalf. Not because he and I are from the same background, but because I know enough about what he went through and what he did to not be surprised if this happens. No matter what his background and origin is. But many of us black folks, we've been drinking the bad Kool-Aid for the last 20 plus years. We've had some really intelligent leaders, but they've been under this notion that Islam is not black enough. No, no. Many Muslims are not. The Muslim world might not be black enough, psychologically speaking. They may not be aware enough, conscious enough. But that doesn't mean that Islam is not just enough for us. When we really look at what we're looking for, we're looking for justice because we've been victims of injustice. And there's nothing wrong with us looking for justice from God and from any who claim to worship him. That's perfectly okay. But we got to realize something else too. If this is what we're looking for, we need to also know and understand that we can't run around here using, um, using bad information as an excuse to reject this. Malcolm didn't. When Malcolm did not know, he did not know. In the beginning, Malcolm knew that there was something else other than um, what he'd been taught. But he even said one time, they jumped over us to go try to make the whites Muslim. But he still did not know. But when Malcolm went and made the Hajj and he saw that white was a physical description in the Muslim world, at least at that time, that's what it was. It was a physical description. When he saw this, then he said, that's what it is. And Islam has the answer to America's race problem. They won't accept it, but I'm going to tell them about it anyway. And he did not become shy and, and demurring. And he did not become this colorblind Buddhist who holds hands with the oppressors and sings Kumbaya trying to get their acceptance. He still came back with the message of self, self-respect, self-determination, self-love. He still came back and he said to black folks, look, they're not the devil because of how they were born, but they were taught wrong. You're still going to have to do for yourself. But since they're not the devil, they can make more choices, which means they can choose right or wrong. So if they choose right, don't oppress the ones who make the right choices. But understand, you cannot rely on their community. Stop looking for their acceptance. Just like I told you before, it's not about them accepting you. Matter of fact, it's about an alliance between the oppressed peoples of the world, and they're not it. This is what he said after he became a Muslim. He was still that fiery radical against injustice. So, that being said, Malcolm, we don't need to use him, per se, as an excuse to reject what he died on. No, he wasn't afraid when he died. He, he didn't want to, but he wasn't afraid when he died. He expected it. He said he was prepared. And he died like a man. He didn't die on his knees. He died on his feet. Literally. He was standing about to give that powerful message to the crowd when they shot him. Now, I say this to say that we got to correct ourselves. Malcolm did not ask for his birthday to be celebrated. He did not ask for his grave to become a site for festivals or anything of that nature. He did not ask to become an idol. This is not what Malcolm wanted. If Malcolm is really our hero, then let's not wait until May 19th to live out what he was. For me, and for many other Muslims who know how just Allah is and how against the oppressor God is, every day is Malcolm X day for us. You see, when you're Muslim, these good principles aren't limited to a day. Mother's Day is not a day when you're Muslim. Father's Day is not a day when you're Muslim. Thanksgiving is not a day when you're Muslim. 
Malcolm X Day is not a day when you're Muslim. Islam is not a day, and it's not just a month of Ramadan. It's year long. It is every day. All of these times are Mother's Day, Father's Day, Malcolm X Day. The times to practice Islam, the times to pray. All of these times are these things. Every day is a day to do what's right and to oppose what is wrong. To walk in the footsteps of prophets as best we can and in the footsteps of their companions. Every day is this. This is what made Malcolm the hero that he is today, which is why people want to celebrate his birthday. He didn't do this stuff just on his birthday. He did it every day. Black folks, understand this. Correct these misconceptions. Malcolm X Day is not May 19th. It's every day. Correct this other misconception. Islam is black enough if that's what you mean by just and fair enough. It is anti-oppressor enough for us and for our people. We just have to understand that we can't take other people's interpretation when they want to sell out. But this doesn't mean that we reject what was actually revealed and what's been recorded. It doesn't mean that. This is for black folks. Somebody wants to be Christian, be Christian because you're convinced of Christianity. And believe me, when you study the two and compare, you won't be. But if you're convinced of Christianity, be Christian. If you're convinced of Judaism, be Jewish. But don't turn your nose up at Islam because you say it's not black enough. No, Malcolm wouldn't have said that. Malcolm didn't say that. And ain't too many black folks in America that would have said Malcolm ain't black enough. He might have been pale physically, but that man was as black as it gets politically and psychologically. He was blacker than a midnight power failure in Senegal. Now that's black. And nobody would have said he's not black enough for us. And he did not say that Islam is not black enough for us. We need to get rid of this. John Henry Clark is an excellent leader because he taught us history. But he said he's not a theologian. So his beef with Islam because of the Arabs is not a valid reason for us to reject it. And even he said, if you're going to be Muslim, be Muslim, but know the history. <laughs> even he said this, well, I'm Muslim because I know the history. We got a, a, a leader named Umar Johnson. The man is brilliant. He's a genius when it comes to politics and how to fight psychological warfare. But he says, I tune into the Most High and to the ancestors. The ancestors did not stop the slave trade. They could not, and it's not their fault. But the ancestors who did some of the most fighting back were Muslims. So what does this tell you? I think I've made the point for us black folks. Now I'm going to tell you non-blacks who are Muslim and who want to co-opt Malcolm X. I'm going to tell you about what you're doing wrong, what's wrong with you. Because y'all got to understand something. Malcolm did not become Muslim and then become an integrationist. Malcolm did not become Muslim and then become colorblind. <sighs> Malcolm did not become Muslim and then all of a sudden he couldn't see race anymore and he was ready to hold hands with the white man in America and sing Kumbaya. Malcolm did not become a Buddhist or Buddhist-like. No. Many of you got White's disease. You got the same brainwashing that, that black folks in the Americas had before Malcolm X. Before Marcus Garvey, many of you got the same thing. And not all of you do. Most of you who are listening to this don't have this problem. But you know many people from your ethnic communities who do. A lot of young Pakistanis and young Arabs are going to listen to this message. And you've always gotten it. You've been awake for years. You young cats. <laughs> but you know people, many times they'll even be your own parents and your uncles and your aunts and some cousins back home who don't get it. They don't understand. Many of them don't even know who Malcolm X was, but then when they do, they get this bad picture. Malcolm was not an integrationist when he died. Malcolm came back from, the, uh, from his Hodge, and he said, over there, white is a description. There's such a thing as white, but it is a physical description based on people coming from white countries. The attitude of white has been removed. Now this right here tells you he's not an integrationist. He's not colorblind. He tells you it exists, but its meaning changes from the Muslim world to the non-Muslim world. And since then, its meaning has changed in the Muslim world. 
Right now it's at a subconscious level. But it's going to come to the conscious level. <laughs> the political meaning of white is going to make its way to the conscious uh, minds of the Muslims. Maybe in another generation. You all must understand. You don't come along and tell us when we're mad about oppression, when we're mad about our rights being violated in the Americas, not just the United States, but in the Americas. When, if we decide tomorrow that we're going to start shooting police officers in Brazil and in the United States for killing black men, that's not going to be a wise move unless we've made plans to somehow get away with this, which we don't have the means to do. But don't come and tell us that that's immoral. You don't say that to us. Malcolm never said it's immoral. You're going to come and you're going to try to say, well, Malcolm wouldn't have wanted this. No. Malcolm never condemned this sort of thing. He never condemned self-defense. He promoted it. Now, I know that if somebody does this, they'll get caught and they'll go to jail. And people who didn't do it will also get caught with them and go to jail and probably be killed in a prison. So that's the only reason I don't tell black folks to do this kind of thing. I have no moral qualms against self-defense or retaliation so that people stop doing what they're doing. My objection to it is strategic and legal. It's not moral. And I make no apologies for this. And you must understand that Malcolm died a revolutionary. See, black folks got to realize he died a Muslim, but you Muslims need to realize he died a revolutionary. He did not apologize for the Algerians when they finally said, you know what, we're going to cut these French people up and they're going to get out of Algeria one way or another. He didn't apologize for that. He would have told the French, you owe them a, a thank you and you owe them favors for not following you to France and killing you there. That's what Malcolm would have said. Malcolm did not apologize for self-defense or retaliation. But we got to free our minds and that's also what Malcolm was saying. And many of you, you may co-op Malcolm but your weakness and your willingness to sell out and your seeking of acceptance by uh, exactly the same oppressor of Malcolm and his people and your people would have made him sick to his stomach. He might, I'm not saying he absolutely would, but he might have made takfir on many of you. If he had learned more from Sheikh Hassoun about revolution and the revolutionary heritage of Islam, he may have turned and made talk fear on many of you today. And called you hypocrites on top of that. Why? Because you, you claim stuff that you don't mean. So I wanted to tell both sides what the corrections are that they need to make. Black folks, we don't need to make a new religion out of Malcolm. And I don't think it's gotten quite that far yet, but it's very close. Making a new holiday he didn't want out of his birthday instead of understanding that this is his birthday, but that his day is every day out the year. Making a pilgrimage site out of his grave? No. That's a new religion. He didn't want that. And you who are Muslim in the Muslim world, you need to understand that Malcolm died a revolutionary. He was not an apologist. If your leaders are corrupt, to hell with them literally. If you're being oppressed, to hell with your oppressor, literally. And don't apologize for it. Defend yourself. Know what your rights are and don't oppress anybody else lest you become like your oppressor. But protect yourself, defend yourself, and make no apologies for it. That, that's the revelation. That's the revolution within the revelation. And both, both sides, Black folks who have rejected Islam, black folks who have accepted it, but then want to mix it, and non-black folks who are Muslim, but they're not ready for the revolutionary aspects of it. All of you need to realize, all of us need to realize something else about Malcolm and Islam. The revolutionary heritage of Islam goes back not only to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he was quite revolutionary. It goes back it goes back to the beginning of tyranny. It goes back all the way to the beginning. You see, Muhammad وسلم, saw an oppressive culture that his people had. Now, the kuffar were the kuffar. But for the Muslims who had these um, 
bad traits of ignorance left in him. Oh, he was revolutionary. He was a burden even to them if they did not want to take his message lock, stock, and barrel right from the beginning. If they wanted to hold on to something bad, he was a fit in the form, and he should have been. How so? Before there was really such a thing as racism as we know it and colorism, because the Arabs at that time were dark and, and many of them still are anyway, he still went and he picked poor black men and told them to go to the fathers of wealthy red women from noble tribes and tell these fathers, I've been told to marry your daughter. At least two times, if not more than that. This is what Muhammad did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see, when it was, when tribe was everything and origin was everything and slavery was, um, was unfortunate, he would go to slaves, black or not. He would go to black people, free or slave, Arab or non-Arab, and he would marry them to noble Arab women who were wealthy and who were paler than the men and put these men on top of these women, literally and figuratively. He upset the custom of his time. He didn't respect it when it was wrong. That's revolutionary. He told his people, to hell with your culture, literally. We're going to follow revelation. And the revelation character trumps money and origin. That's what he said. And he meant it. Down to marriage. Down to the bedrooms of the Muslims. That's how far this message goes. Jesus, alayhi salam, Isa, the Messiah, he was anti-white supremacist. The thing was, much like we have to tell our people today, he had to tell his people at the time how the Romans, who were freak, nasty, filthy, funky, could walk into Judea and take the place from Bani Israel. How can they take this place from us if we're the people of God and they're so filthy, nasty, funky? Well, he told them how. This is what you've done to separate yourself from God. So he sent them, and they're worse than you, and now they rule you. What you going to do to fix yourself? before you try to throw them over. But he was still against that, that Roman occupation. And it was his own people to turn him over to the Romans to kill him on their behalf. Before that, Musa lay Islam. White supremacy was not a thing in Musa's time, but oppression still was. And he had to stand up to Pharaoh. Before that, before that, there was Daniel, and he had to stand up against the tyrant of his time. And there was David, and he had to fight the, ty the tyrants of his time, one of them being Goliath. And Solomon, he had to deal with his own people's treachery, lying on him the whole time. And then before that, there was Abraham, <laughs> Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ibrahim, he had to stand up to Nimrod. So, this anti-oppression and this anti-white supremacy in the modern day context of being anti-oppression is a part and parcel of the heritage of Islam. And know this, the first slave revolt involving Africans in the New World was the Wolof Rebellion of 1522 in a Spanish colony, one of the islands in the Caribbean, led by Wolof Muslims who were later joined by other Africans and by Amerindians. That's the first revolt that involved Africans. It was started by Muslims. The more successful one was started by Bukman, who was a Muslim. He went from Jamaica to Haiti. And he was one of those who started the Haitian Rebellion. And then in Brazil, the Bahia Revolt was started by Muslims and then later on non-Muslims joined. And it was almost successful. But it did result in some of them being allowed to go back home to Nigeria today. So let this be known. Don't sit up here and say that it ain't just enough, it ain't fair enough, it ain't revolutionary enough, it ain't black enough. And to the rest of you, don't sit up here and try to say that, no, it's not revolutionary. It's very apologetic. Don't try to say that mess either. 
That's not the heritage. Both sides need to understand this. Malcolm understood it. Now it's time for the rest of us to understand what it really means. Where does revelation meet revolution? When it does, every day's Malcolm's day. Every day is the day to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every day is the, the day to follow the examples of his sahaba who were trying. Every day is the day to be against the oppressor and for the victim's rights. Every day is that day to do what's right. Not just one day. And it's time for both of us to start seeing this. I hope this message is a benefit. Salam alaikum.